Let me introduce to you my first guest, Tyler. Introduce yourself. Hey everyone, my name is Tyler Saunders. I'm a personal trainer and an online fitness coach. So what does fitness and gym mean to you? Fitness and gym, it's an integral part of my life right now. It hasn't always been. I'm actually quite, quite late into the game. I started training in 2013. I played wheelchair basketball. That was my first kind of initial introduction into fitness. I started to take the gym seriously, took my nutrition seriously in 2013, and I've seen benefits to my mental health, my well-being, my physical health, and I just want to help other people experience the same things. I love that. So would you say you go to the gym for your mental health, mainly? As well. Um, I think definitely in lockdown, a lot of us realised how important the gym was to us, but also physical activity, how much it has a positive effect on your mental well-being. So that's oh. definitely one of the reasons why I train now as well. That's good. So what would you say is the most important exercises for your lifestyle or mobility? Um, for me, I, I was born with one leg, so that's okay. my story. Um, I've always had kind of mobility issues and impairments, mm -hmm. but for me, compound training is the most type, well, compound exercise is the most important for me um, because they're multi-muscles, multi-joints, and they kind of replicate real life movements and mm -hmm. They kind of replicate what you would do in your daily life. So kind of functional training, for me, that's the most important. Amazing. I'm going to show you guys a few of the movements and exercises that I include in my training that I feel are very important to me and my strength and fitness goals. Um, we'll have some adaptations. They'll all be compound movements, so kind of multi-jointed, okay. multi-muscle movements, a lot of core engagement. And I, I, feel that, I feel that helps me in my training in my everyday life. And hopefully some other people get some benefit from it too. Okay, I can't wait. Yeah. Let's get ready to work out. Let's go. Okay, so one of the main exercises that I incorporate in my training is the deadlift. Okay. Now, it's called the king of all exercises because it engages so many different muscles. Pretty much every muscle in your body is activated whilst doing this deadlift. Okay. But primarily it strengthens the glutes, the back, the legs, the core. So I always include it in because I feel it's good for my balance. It helps me with my training and my day-to-day -day performance. Okay. So I'll give you a spin, I'll show you how it works. Can't wait to see it. Nice tight glutes. Would you say that. you've had to adapt exercises to your disability? In a sense, yes. Again, just because of the balance aspect and using a barbell. Initially, when I first started to train, I found it difficult just because the bar you can see is quite long. Mm -hmm. So in order to regress it and make it a little bit more suitable to my needs, I've then used kettlebells or, de or dumbbells. You can use one of the two. It just allows me to keep the weight a lot more closer to my midline and just help with balance. Kettlebells and dumbbells are mm. really useful, especially if you have a disability, because yes. it gives you more freedom. 100%, yes. But that activates more muscles, activates your core. So you get a lot more payoff from using these. And then people like who have impairments. So huh? I feel like I've just learned so much from you. Amazing, so. amazing. What were the key aspects? Making I said? sure my core is engaged. Yep. And straight spine. Straight spine. Yep. And slight bend in the knees and bend hips. Knees. Right, so walk, okay. walk between the kettlebells. That's yes. it. Bring them a bit closer into you there. Yes. And you're pushing the floor down with your feet. You're not lifting with your arms and hands and shoulders. Pushing Push. like that? That's it, yeah. OK. Let's give it a go. Three, two, one. Up, oh, stand tall. Good. That's it, stand tall. Perfect. Okay. Good. Yeah. Let's go for five reps. Two. All right, looking good. Touch and up. Three. Nice, fat. Let's go on. Stand up tall. Chin up. Good. Four. Looking good. Last one. <laughs> five. That's easy. Okay. We need a heavier weight for you. <laughs> OK. All right. I got this. I got this. Don't easy worry about work. that. Stand a bit taller, a bit taller. Good. Two. That's three. Easy work. It's giving us four. Five. You might as well go ten. ten. Come on. Okay. That's six. Ooh. Come here. That was a, I broke a sweat there. But <laughs> let's see what's next. This is an example of a machine I probably need to adjust. But if, if it can't be adjusted, I can't use it. Or someone has to help me with it. How am I going? <laughs> but anyway, it looks really cool. I'd love to use it, but it needs to be adjusted. One of the downfalls. <laughs> oh my God, it's so funny. Okay, so now we have the barbell deadlift, which is your more kind of traditional deadlift. Once I've built up enough strength and balance to attempt the barbell deadlift, I've never gone back. Every now and then I'll use the kettlebells, but now the barbell is my main 
apparatus and okay. it does all of the same benefits I mentioned before. You know, strengthens the core, the glutes, the back, pretty much your whole body, your grip strength, your mm -hmm. shoulders, your back, everything gets engaged. And now with the bar, I'm a lot more stronger, I can lift a lot heavier and I feel it helps me more in my day-to-day -day activities. Okay. So I'll give you a few reps, I'll show you how yeah, it looks. Yeah, show me how. Got a nice straight back, okay. pulling those shoulders back and down, keeping the bar really close to the body, that's the main thing you have to worry about. So you take a big breath in, push the floor down, and we stand. I'm definitely got a lot stronger okay. in my body since incorporating deadlifts and squats and very heavy compound movements. Again, it helps you to engage your core, it makes you stronger, mm -hmm. reduces the risk of injuries. Yeah. And again, it's applicable to real life. You pick up things off the floor yeah. and you want to be able to do that without putting your back out. I feel like overall, people that aren't as strong, they should do deadlifts. The concept of lifting a heavy load off the floor, it's definitely something that everyone should incorporate in their training, whether they're male, female, young, old, abled, you know, disabled, for a better choice of word, but everyone should be able to pick up something heavy off the floor, engage their core, support their spine, and lift without any trouble. Okay, let's give this a go. All right, come on, your turn. Okay, okay. It's a big breath in, brace the core, and again, push the floor down. Easy work, yes, Fats, come on. Touch and then up. Good job, too. Let's just go for three. Tap, drive the floor away. Good work. Four. Ooh, so intense. <laughs> Cold, just lifted yeah. three reps of 40. I feel so accomplished. Wow. That was good. Okay, let's, let's move on. I need to start doing those again. That's for sure. Yeah. I'm my enemy. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so another great exercise that I incorporate into my training is the squat. There's lots of different variations, okay. but I'm going to talk about why I do the ones I do and how it benefits me. So the first exercise we'll do is called the box squat. Mm -hmm. Now the box adds a little bit of support for somebody who might have poor balance. Okay. The box gives somebody a bit of support, a bit of a kind of feedback point to know how low they should go in the squat. That's a great useful tip for Very a lot much of so. people that don't have great balance. No. So I didn't know that myself. <laughs> yeah, and the thing is that the box is a great way of kind of starting someone out on squats. Okay. And it allows them to get good force through the appropriate muscles. So I'll give you a demonstration of yeah. how I use it. Your hips and knees to bend at 90 degrees. Okay. Anything higher, you're not really getting enough range. But what I will do is use a kettlebell or a dumbbell. And this is yeah. called a goblet squat. So the weight is underneath the chin, okay. imitating a goblet cup. And what we'll do is sit to the box, nice and slow, drive okay. off the box, stand up tall. I've never seen a squat like this before, but it's really, really cool. It is a good variation to start yeah, with. And it definitely. teaches good mechanics as well. It teaches you good technique on how to do the squat. I'm pushing the floor down with my okay. foot and getting a good squeeze in the glutes, yeah. keeping the chest up. You've got this. And we're done. Yeah. Cool. How do you do your squats today? So now I have the balance, I've got the core strength to go and do freestanding squats. So I'll give you a demonstration on the bar. And one of my favorite squats is the front squat or the Zercher squat, okay. which has the bar at the front of the body. Okay. For me, it's more comfortable than the back squat just because yeah. of my knee. But with the weight being at the front, it allows me to engage my core more. I can get better depth in the squat and it just gives me a lot more benefit out of the exercise. Okay, so what do you call this squat again? So this is called the Zercher squat. Okay. And it's a variation where you actually hold the bar in the crook of the elbow. Okay. It's a variation of a front squat. The traditional front squat, you hold the bar under the neck. Mm -hmm. But if you've got pretty poor wrist mobility or tight forearms like me, then this version is pretty much gives you the same benefit. A little bit more comfortable for me. So how this works is we hold the bar in the crook of the elbow. So all the training I've done has allowed me now to hold a weight while standing on the one leg. Amazing. Take a big breath in, drop down. Wow. And this is quite an advanced that. way of doing a squat, but again, you can use a box to sit on like we just showed you. But when the weight's on the front of the body, it really forces you to engage your core. Okay. I feel there's also less chance of injury as well whilst doing a Zercha squat. Just because the weight's on the front, you can lean forward slightly if you want. Yeah. but it allows you to push through the floor a lot more. And I feel it's less injury prone on my knee. For other people, for other individuals, it might be good to do the back squat. They might prefer it. 
but I'm all about the desertion squat, just for me and my training and my benefits. I was going to say, I, I don't do the front squat often, but I want to give it a go. Okay, let's do it. The bar's a bit high. I'm, I'm so used to it always being high and I have to ask someone to bring it down. Is that something you experience a lot? Yeah, I experience that a lot, but um, I think once you bring it down a bit... We will. We'll get it going. So we're doing the Zercher squat here. Okay. It'll move your hair back, the, the lovely okay. locks. Let's just get them out of the way. So okay. you're going to hook the bar in the crook of the elbow. Okay. Kind of bring your hands in towards your chin. Yes. That's it. Okay, so you're going to stand up and bring the bar up and away. All right. Okay, a couple of steps back. Okay. Okay, we're good. So get your feet set as you would do your normal squat. Yeah. Take a big breath in and drop down as comfortably as low as possible. Nice, and then drive up, push the floor away. Lovely. Nice for that. It's keeping the chest up, perfect. Looking straight ahead. Big breath in. There we go. Ooh. Oof, come on. I'm, I'm seeing the bird. Okay, let's go. Last one, then we walk the bar back. Big push. Nice. Five. Okay. Okay. Step, step, step. And drop. Lovely. Ooh. Come wow. on. Smash okay. that. Yes. 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 Easy work. I love that. And Light that work. is your Zercher squat. Demonstrated yeah. perfectly by our lady fats. I'm so excited. But yeah, I can't wait to move on to the next one. I'm Let's do something into... else. <laughs> okay, so one of my favorite conditioning exercises is called the kettlebell swing. Okay. It's a great exercise for the glutes, for the lower back and the lower back of the legs. But it's also really good for your core and your abdominals. And because it's a repeat movement, it gets your heart rate up as well. Yeah. So short, sharp bursts really work well and you get a good burn all over. So I'm gonna show you how this works for me. And I've adapted it by using my crutch to add as an extra base of support, an extra point of contact on the floor. So you've got the weight, again, similar to the deadlift, you wanna keep the back straight, okay. keep the hips pushed back. And you're not kind of bending the knees to initiate the movement, you're leaning forward okay. and generating the force from your bum, your glutes and your hips. You're gonna thrust forward, use that to power the weight up, okay? So you swing back, Thrust the hips, yes. lean forward, up. Wow. <sighs> You're phenomenal. <laughs> oh my God. And for me, the crutch is just giving me that little bit yeah. more support. Yeah, that support. Because I've done these on the one leg, but it just means I'm quite unstable. Mm. So with the stick, with the crutch, just allows me to get more <sighs> out of the exercise. Okay. But a few reps in, you really start to feel it I in your glutes. Get stuck in now. Like, feel it in your core. You do it? Come okay. on, you got this, let's go, let's give it okay. a go. Okay, okay. So you're going to swing the weight between the legs, okay. keep the hands quite close to the crutch, and then use your hips okay. to thrust up, okay? Power through the hips, good. Okay, that's good. So thrust hips forwards, three, four. Okay, five, last one. And six. Whew. Whoa. How was that? I felt it. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely felt it, but it's a great exercise. Again, if you want to work on toning your glutes, strengthening the glutes, these are a great exercise to do. Okay. Well, at least I know. What about your core? So it's great for your core as well. As well. So you want to make sure you're keeping the abdominals braced mm -hmm. as you do. And that prevents you from overarching the back, which can yeah. cause some back pain. So you don't really want to finish off like this. Keep the core engaged and engage the abs, and that keeps the core tight. You finish off at shoulder height as opposed to slightly up here. Okay. Yeah, so the whole time through, keeping the abs tense and it helps strengthen the abs, give you a nice washboard stomach as well. I feel like I've had a PP session as well. You have. <laughs> it's all about sharing the knowledge. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And hopefully someone out there as well can gain something from what we've been talking about. Exactly. So, all right. You heard it from him. We'll give your legs a break. We're going to work on this section here. So let's go, let's go. Yeah, let's go. Let's move on to the last exercise. All right. OK, so let's get you sat down. OK. And one Ooh. of my favorite core exercises is called the Russian twist. So with this exercise, we're using our rotation muscles. Let me, let me give you a demo first. Okay, yeah. So I'm gonna keep the chest nice and tall, twist, touch the weight lightly, and to the right. The whole time you wanna keep your eyes on the weight, hear the strain yeah. in the voice every time I turn left and right. Some people might just kind of sit straight and do this you're not activating anything in the trunk. You have to turn your, your body view. left and right. And I feel it's a really good that one for... A lot. Okay. Yeah, you'll see people doing lots of them like that, yeah. not really getting anything out of it. 
We're going to get you to turn all the way around, left and right. Turn your whole body. Okay. And because you're sat down, it's accessible to anyone as well. Exactly. A lot of our seated athletes, they can do it in their chair. Amputees, everyone can do this exercise. Again, so it's very accessible, everyone can do it. Nothing too challenging, but really effective for strengthening the core. I to ask, do you yeah. think gym workers would benefit from training, like training for disabled people in general? I think it would definitely be useful um, and would benefit the, you know, the disability community in yeah. terms of them wanting to train. Because I think a lot of times people don't feel that they will be catered for, their needs will be catered for at a gym. And when I did my personal training qualification, we didn't have a section that spoke about, you know, special populations in terms of people with disabilities. Yeah. I've learned stuff along the way myself. I've gone and done extra courses, but I think it would definitely be a really good move if yeah. that was something that gyms or even personal training qualifications had to include. Yeah. Even just a segment, a section on how to adapt exercises for people with different impairments and conditions. I completely agree. I think it, it would help a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I think if they could ask a gym worker, oh, how could I use this machine? And they knew the knowledge, how to do it. How to do it. It would be really great. Yeah, definitely, 100%. But anyway, let's, let me do this. I'm going to try it. Okay, <laughs> so... See how I do. Keeping it close, and you're initiating the movement from the trunk, okay? So you're gonna okay. twist as far around to the left as you can. Just okay. slightly touch the weight as low to the floor as you can. Okay. Good, and then turn around the other way. Keep your eyes on the weight. Okay. Good, and twist from the waist. Twist from the trunk. Nice, fast, good job. So if you keep the heel down, it just grounds you that bit more. And okay. then you can just work on go. actually twisting and working those obliques properly. And if you do 20 of these at this tempo, you'll find your heart rate goes up pretty quickly Whew. and you get a good burn. I think my heart rate, <laughs> heart rate is going up already. OK, lean mm. back a bit. Let's, let's up it a bit more. Lean back a tiny bit. And now do it. <laughs> <laughs> there we go, twist. Ooh. And this is how we get a nice, strong core. Yeah. Get that definition in the obliques just here with a slow, controlled Russian Ooh. twist. Give me a bump there. Awesome, nice. Ooh. Wow. That is definitely, yeah, something. That is intense, right? <laughs> it is And again, intense. it's all about the control and tempo. Yes. It's not about going really fast. Okay. Especially when you're training your core and your abs, slow is better. Okay. Always remember that, slower is better. So this is the end. Thank you so much for coming on and showing me all these exercises. Thank, thank and you giving for having me. Advice. You've done really well with them as well. You thank smashed you. it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Like, I'm so grateful. Literally, you're going to help so many people I'm glad. have the confidence to even go to the gym, work out. It's, it's, it's amazing, amazing what, you've, what you've done as well. And I'm glad you asked me on. And hopefully your audience, my audience, can get some value from it and it helps benefit them. Fabulous. So, where can people find you? Uh, my main social media platform, Instagram. I am Tyler Saunders. Not quite on the TikTok yet, but I'm getting Soon there. Will be. I will be. I'm going to ask you advice on that because you're smashing it. But yeah, I am Tyler Saunders. That's where you can find me. And yeah, anyone wants to get in touch, just hit me up. Amazing. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you comment down below and make sure you hit the like button. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs>